Shairu Sankayat, we would like to listen you and we would like to invite you to speak if this webinar. Mr. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good uh, evening to all the friends and brothers from different parts of the world, especially the Muslim world. And I'm very grateful to my brother Saber Abu Maryam Sahib and the Palestine Foundation for taking this very timely initiative on Palestine and Kashmir because these two issues are inextricably intertwined with the issue of peace, security and stability in the Middle East and in South Asia and globally. And they're also linked with the issues of justice, of human rights, of the right of self-determination, which has been enshrined under the United Nations Charter and the uh, United Nations resolutions on both Kashmir and Palestine. Uh, before beginning my presentation, I would like to start with a quotation from the great leader, the father of the nation, Qayyad Azam Muhammad Ali Jannah, who gave a message on Eid, the last Eid message before his death. He died on 11th September 1948. He was the father of the nation of Pakistan. And on 28th August, he gave the last Eid message where he talked of Palestine and Kashmir as causes. And he said that there should be a united front on Palestine and Kashmir. He was then governor general of Pakistan and that this should be promoted so that the voices are strongly felt on the issue of Palestine and Kashmir. So I think that this is a very important to take it forward. And it shows that Pakistan has had a strong commitment to the cause of the oppressed people, especially Palestine and Kashmir from day one. And this was also underlined before the creation of Pakistan when the All India Muslim League passed a special resolution on Palestine on 23rd March, 1940. And there were two resolutions, one seeking an independent state for the Muslims of South Asia, uh, Pakistan, which came into being seven years later. And the other resolution was on Palestine, along with the resolution on Pakistan on 23rd March, 1940. And before that also, the qaeda azam had initiated a Palestine Day Solidarity in India in 1938. And then he also launched a Palestine Fund uh, to express solidarity with Palestine. And then he was also in communication with Mufti Amin al Husseini, the Mufti of Palestine. And when he went to Cairo in 1946, he had a meeting with Mufti Amin al Husseini Saab. And Mufti Amin al Husseini Saab also sent him a thank you letter because it was not just Palestine that we were supporting the uh, leadership of Pakistan, the founding fathers of Pakistan. It was the oppressed Muslims of Indonesia. And I say hello to our friends from Indonesia also in Malaysia and also uh, uh, in the other parts of the Middle East. So this has been a long standing commitment of Pakistan. When we talk of Palestine and Kashmir, there is a strong rele relevance because the two issues are interlinked. Both are now facing oppression in Kashmir under Modi's Hindutva policies, in Palestine, in uh, occupied Palestine, Israel's Netanyahu. And Netanyahu and Modi are almost like first cousins. They have a similar approach. Their view is quite similar. And they have also been focusing on oppressing the people of Kashmir and Palestine, respectively. And they have also been. Uh, uh, define United Nations resolutions day one and day in and day out. And also they have an ideological agenda. If there's Hindutva in uh, Kashmir, uh, there's uh, Zionism in Palestine. And interestingly today, as we speak, Kashmiris are facing the longest lockdown in history. And Modi is now trying to implement the Palestine formula Netanyahu's formula of demographic change, trying to transform a majority into a minority. As they are trying to do in Palestine, they brought in Jewish settlers from outside. They have occupied Palestinian land. Similarly, in Kashmir also, they have launched uh, 100,000 people from the RSS gang, which is the militant wing of the ruling party, and which is very anti-Muslim. 
and it is a neo-fascist organization inspired by the brown shirts of Mussolini and the uh, 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 SS of uh, Nazi Germany. And they have been focusing on uh, anti-Muslim uh, propaganda. I would also like to mention the role of Pakistan. Pakistan is unique among all Muslim and other countries in their support for Palestine. Even after the death of the Qaqiyas, we are the only non-Arab country which has participated in combat against Israel in two Arab-Israeli wars, 1967 and 1973. In the uh, 1967 war, Group Captain Saiful Azam from the Pakistan Air Force shot down four Israeli tanks while he was serving on behalf of Pakistan, serving in the Jordanian Air Force in the June 1967 war. And he recently died about uh, uh, three weeks ago. And he was a, a, a veteran of that war. In 1973, and that time, Mr. Uh, uh, in 67, it was President Ayub Khan who was President of Pakistan. In 73, Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was Prime Minister of Pakistan. And when there was the Ramzan War, which we call the October 73 War, Pakistani Air Force pilots served in the Syrian Air Force. And they shot down two Israeli jets. And uh, that was uh, uh, Commodore uh, Satar. He's still living. And they shot down those jets. So we have had a special honor that Pakistani pilots participated with the Arab brethren to support this cause. And this was very clearly state policy. And I would also like to mention that the first time the recognition of the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, under Chairman Yasser Arafat, as the sole legitimate organization of the Palestinian people, this was achieved on Pakistani soil. And the Islamic summit, which was convened under Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto with the support of King Faisal Shaheed of Saudi Arabia. This resolution was passed that PLO is the sole legitimate representative of the people of Palestine. Six months before, the Arab League passed the resolution in Rabat in October 74. So Pakistan has been in the forefront. And then we were training uh, pilots and cadets from uh, uh, Palestine who are still serving in the, in the Pakistan Military Academy also. And I would also like to mention that during the Battle of Beirut in 1982, when uh, Palestinian forces were fighting against the Phalangists in Lebanon and also fighting against uh, uh, General Sharon's uh, fascist forces, Israeli forces, the three Muslim countries who offered troops to help Arafat, Pakistan, Iran, Algeria. And at that, that time, General Zia was the president of Pakistan. So we have had a strong commitment to this issue. I would also like to mention in Palestine, you, uh, uh, Sabin Abu Mariam mentioned uh, about uh, uh, the forum. When I attended the uh, parliamentarians for Al-Quds conference in uh, Istanbul in December 2018, I established the parliamentary forum on Palestine, Kashmir, and Rohingya, because these are all oppressed peoples. And then we have had different events and different functions on that. And in this regard, this year, on 17th February, my colleague and friend, Senator Mushtaq Ahmed, who is from the Jamaat Islami, sponsored a resolution which was unanimously passed by the Senate of Pakistan, condemning the so-called deal of the century on Palestine, and expressing full solidarity with the people of Palestine. And we have been hosting delegations from Palestine also at different times. When I was Minister for Information, Tourism and Culture in 1998, we had become a nuclear power. It's called Bizarat e Alam in, um, uh, in uh, Arabic. Uh, President Arafat came to Pakistan. And we had just become a nuclear power in 28th of May, uh, 1998. And President Arafat came to Pakistan to congratulate Pakistan. And he told me, I was his minister in waiting. I was doing protocol with him. I knew him from before because I had interviewed President Arafat in 1990, uh, in Tunis, courtesy uh, Colonel uh, Abu Khalid, who took me there, and it was two years after the martyrdom of Abu Jihad by the uh, Israelis at the hands of the Israelis, and I had three, four long interviews with Arafat. Sir. And uh, President Arafat said that at the first khutbah issued uh, at the Al Quds uh, Mosque by the uh, Imam, after Pakistan became nuclear, 
He said the Imam warned Israel that Israel, you better watch it. Now Pakistan is a nuclear power and Pakistan is a brother of Palestine. And I would also like to mention that when the first fair and free elections were held in Gaza and Hamas emerged as uh, uh, the elected uh, representative, we invited in Pakistan in June 2006, Mahmoud Zahar, who was the foreign minister of uh, uh, the government of Palestine in Gaza to Pakistan. And I hosted him in the Pakistan parliament. We had a special resolution passed. We, he came to the parliament, we honored him and the government of Pakistan at that time. At that time, it was General Musharraf who was uh, the government. Prime Minister Shaukat Aziz gave $3 million to the government of uh, Palestine and to uh, Mahmoud Zahar as our modest contribution for solidarity. So Pakistan has been very consistent. And if you see the passports of Pakistanis, it's very clear. It says you can go to all countries of the world except Israel because we do not accept Israel. We do not recognize Israel and we cannot recognize Israel. There have been some attempts. Some attempts have been made. Some attempts have been made by countries, some people, to talk of recognition of Israel. I am one of those who have been opposed to the recognition of Israel, and this is also state policy now, because for a number of reasons. When we, re if we try to recognize Israel, we reward aggression and occupation. We violate United Nations resolutions, UN Charter. We undermine the cause of, if we recognize Israel, we undermine the cause of Kashmir because on the one hand, we are supporting the Intifada in occupied Kashmir. On the other hand, we are rewarding aggression of uh, the Zionists in Palestine. And also for us, it is uh, not a simple issue. It's also Qibla Awal for us as Muslims because Jerusalem is occupied territory. And as you remember, King Faisal Shaheed used to say, Saudi Arabia, that his last wish was to offer his prayers in the uh, al uh, mosque uh, uh, as a free country. So I think we are very clear. Our solidarity is there. Finally, I'd like to request uh, uh, all the participants that we should have institutional measures to take this issue forward. Perhaps a Palestine Kashmir solidarity organization or foundation can be formed. Then there are events coming up. Uh, we should celebrate those events. On 13th July, there's the Martyrs Day in Occupied Kashmir. Then there's the uh, events in Palestine. And we have to speak up for Palestine. We have to speak up for Kashmir because the regimes in the Muslim world are very weak. They are under pressure. But the power of public opinion is there. You have seen what happened in America. Black lives matter. They have changed the course of history. They have changed the course of toppling statues. And during the Iraq war in 2003, which Pakistan also opposed, because it was an illegal, immoral, unjust war launched by the US. The power of public opinion was there. There were demonstrations. So I think the power of public opinion is paramount. We should mobilize public opinion. We should support the cause of Palestine and Kashmir and other oppressed peoples. And we should do it in an institutional basis. And this is an excellent platform of eminent politicians, public intellectuals, scholars, writers and uh, activists and my colleagues are here also senator mushtaq saab and senator satara yaz who's also very uh, strong on issues uh, and Yaqub baloch saab and others so i feel that we should take this forward. abdul hamid lone saab is also here from kashmir so we should take this forward and i think it's important that together we can overcome these problems and together at least we can make a difference and as the qaid azam mohammed ali Jinnah said in his eid message that if we have a united front on Palestine and Kashmir, our voices will be felt in the forum of world public opinion. Thank you very much. I wish you good luck. Stay safe. God bless you all. And uh, God save us from the occupiers, both Indian and Israeli, and also from the pandemic. Thank you. And Mubarak to Saber Abu Maryam. Mashallah. Mazboot. Well done. Thank you. And Mujad Glanisab is also here. He's a true Mujahid, mashallah. Thank you.